We study sequences in high school math, not only because they're one of the building blocks of higher level mathematics classes like calculus, but they also involve um, logic and reasoning. So when we're working with sequences, we're developing our logical thinking skills. Now here we have a sequence that goes by fives. To get the next number, we add 5. We say that the common difference is 5 in that case. When we are adding or subtracting the same number to get the next number, we call it an arithmetic sequence. Now, for some reason, when it's a sequence, we call it arithmetic, but normally we say this word arithmetic. So it's perfectly acceptable to say arithmetic sequence. This sequence has a different type of pattern. Here we are multiplying by four each time to get the next number. Since we are multiplying by four each time, we say that the common ratio is four. When we are multiplying or dividing by the same number to get the next number, we call it a geometric sequence. We can write formulas to describe sequences. A formula that lets you figure out a certain term just by plugging, plugging in the term number is called an explicit formula. Let's figure out the first four terms of this sequence by using the formula. Now, n is the term number we want, and a sub n stands for the term itself. So to find the first term, n is equal to 1. So we'll say a sub 1, so that's the first term, the term we want. And we're going to substitute 1 for n, because the term number is 1. Work that out. Negative 3 plus 4 equals 1. All right, so coincidentally, the first term equals 1. Usually it is in that case. So notice that to get the first term, all we had to do is plug in 1 for n. So to get the second term, we just plug in 2. That's negative 6 plus 4. We notice the numbers are getting smaller. In fact, it went down by 3. All right, so let's go ahead and write the first four terms in order. The first term is 1. Second term is negative 2, third term is negative 5, and the fourth term is negative 8, and that pattern would continue. Now, we can also graph these results, and to help us do that, we can make a quick table of values. So we'll have n as the term number, so that would be 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the first four terms, and the term itself that's a sub n. We can write those down over here on the right side. Now each of these rows is, is like a point. So the n's are like our x's, and the term, or a sub n, those are like our y's. So let's see our x's. Well, those, we're going to use 1, 2, 3, and 4. And our y's um, are between 1 and negative 8. So I'm going to set up my axes to accommodate those values. So on the x-axis, we'll have that be n. And on the y-axis, that's a sub n for our term. Let's put a little scale on here. So each line is worth 1, but I'm not going to label every single line. All right, so the first point will be 1, 1. Second point is 2, negative 2. Third point is 3, negative 5. 
And the fourth point is 4, negative 8. All right, we notice that to get to our next point on the graph, we're going down 3. That shows up here in our formula. With this formula, we need to use the order of operations properly. So if we're doing it in our head or by hand, we need to remember we do exponents before we multiply. So we'll be doing 1.4 to some power and then multiplying by 3. All right, so to get the first term, well, that would be a sub 1. We'll substitute 1 for n. Notice that the 1 is going to be an exponent. Well, 1.4 to the first power is just 1.4. So we just need to multiply 3 times 1.4. And my calculator tells me that that's equal to 4.2. Get the second term. We'll substitute 2 for n. Now we could do this step by step with the order of operations, but our calculators typically do the oper order of operations for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and type all this into my calculator and see what I get. All right, so 3 times 1.4 to the second power equals 5.88. So my calculator did 1.4 to the second power and then multiplied it by 3. All right, so the first four terms of our sequence are 4.2, 5.88, and 11.5248. Now, I think we'll round those numbers to the tenths place when we make our table of values because we don't need to have so many digits to have a pretty accurate graph. So in my table of values, I'll have 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the first four terms. And the actual terms, a sub n, will be 4.2, rounding to the nearest tenths place, 5.9, 8.2, and 11.5. So let's see, my x values, or my n's, will need to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And my terms themselves are between 4.2 and 11.5. I think I'm going to need to go by twos here. I think if I make my graph really tall here, we can squeeze in going by ones. So here are my term numbers on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, let's see, I'll label every other line. So I'm going by ones, but I'm not labeling every line. And sure enough, just enough space here to get 11.5 on there. And that, those are the terms themselves. All right, so first term, 4.2. Second term, 5.9. Third term, 8.2. And the fourth term, 11.5. Now we notice with this term, this graph, that these points do not line up in a perfect line. If we were to connect these, it would be curved. Now if we compare the two sequences that we graphed a little bit more, we notice in this sequence, to get the next number, we were just multiplying by 1.4 again. So we kept multiplying by 1.4 because it was just 3 times 1.4 to the next power. So we just multiplied by another 1.4. In the previous sequence, notice that each time we were adding negative 3 or subtracting 3. So we had a constant rate of change here. And we notice in that situation, these points did make a straight line. Now since, in this first sequence, since we were adding the same number each time, negative 3, this is an arithmetic sequence. 
And in the second sequence, since we are multiplying by the same number each time, this is a geometric sequence. Okay, I hope this introduction to sequences has been helpful. My name is Mr. Ela, signing off.